As we know, animals can send information across their bodies using their nervous system. However, what about organisms like plants? How can a plant communicate from one side of its um, body into, say, the far tips of its leaf? Well, plants use a strategy which is also common to animals, and this is the transport of hormones to uh, transfer information. So a hormone is um, essentially a chemical message um, that organisms can use. An easy way to explain the differences between uh, hormones and um, the nervous system when it comes to transferring uh, information is imagine, say you need to send a message to someone. Now that you have two options to do this, you can either send a text or you can write a letter and send that in the post. Now both ways of communicating ends up with the person uh, receiving some information. However, there's a lot of factors that will affect the transmission of this message. So firstly, if you were to send a text, you write out the message on your phone, send it, and the person almost instantly receives it. Now, this is similar to the nervous system. It's very fast, however, it's very short-lived. However, if you send a handwritten letter, it might take longer to uh, get to that person. However, they're going to hang on to it for a much longer time. This is similar to hormone. So it might take a while for the person to write out the letter, which is similar to a plant having to produce hormones. So a hormone is just a protein uh, that the plant sends, which binds onto receptors in another part of the body, and that tells the plant to do a particular function. So like a letter, it takes time to write out and then it needs to be transferred or submitted for someone to receive it. So for a hormone, it might go into um, a transport medium and then transported to another side of um, the organism. Uh, similar to this, a letter will go into the post and then be sent. And then that person will have to receive the letter, read it, uh, and then act accordingly. So in the absence of a nervous system, plants use um, hormones. And we'll be discussing um, five different types of hormones that plants use um, to carry out different functions in this video. My name is Till Simmons from Agrisol, uh, and this is Agriculture Explained. So before we get into our plant hormones, I think it's important to understand how uh, hormones work overall. So firstly, they're produced by um, some cell. So some cell will um, produce these hormones. Now, um, up here, I've just put the first letter um, for a representation of these ones that we'll get into shortly. But essentially, they get released into a transport medium. They will um, find the correct cell, and then these hormones will pretty much bond to a uh, receptor. So if this is our hormone, it will fit perfectly, or not perfectly, but it will fit into a receptor, um, and then causing this um, cell to do a particular function. So for example, this is um, oxen. Now oxen will um, bind to a um, cell and telling and will tell the cell to pretty much uh, grow and, and, and multiply. So essentially that is exactly what the cell will do and it will increase, um, it will either undergo cell division or a function like that. So essentially that is how hormones work. Hormones can take a long time um, to occur, sometimes hours um, or days. However, they can also last for a long time, uh, say a couple hours or days. And so here are some of our plant hormones. So we've got the hormones here and um, their major function pretty much summarized in one word. So it's important to note that this is not all of the plant's functions. There are more functions. I've just put up uh, one, probably the, the most important summary of all the functions um, here for um, memory's sake. So the first one uh, is quite common. Oxen. Now, oxen uh, pretty much promotes growth. So this includes uh, root growth as well as stem elongation, differentiation, branching, uh, setting and um, development of fruits. And essentially, uh, oxen is found in uh, young leaves as well as buds uh, on the end of a stem. So essentially, when a plant wants to communicate that it wants to grow or do one of those particular functions, it will send out oxen um, to tell the plant uh, a part of itself to do this. Now, we have um, studied oxen and understand these functions, and so we can actually manipulate uh, these signals to um, get, pretty much get the plant to do um, what we want. So an example of this is um, oxen gel for cuttings. And so if you get a, a cutting of a plant, dip it in um, a oxen 
uh, gel, you can pretty much improve your propagation rates uh, and survival rates of these cuttings by um, stimulating root growth. Oxygen can also be used in some uh, herbicides, which can cause abnormal growth. Next, we have our cytokines. These are essentially our anti-ages within our plants. They affect uh, the root growth and differentiation, as well as stimulate plant uh, division, growth, flowering, and germination. So this hormone is made in uh, the plant's roots and then transported across uh, the organism. So a way that uh, cytokines have been used uh, in commercial agriculture is that they have been um, used to make a spray, which can be sprayed on um, cut flowers to prolong their shelf life. Next we have gibberellins, and these are mainly used in uh, fruit production. So they promote seed and bud germination, stem elongation uh, and growth. They also stimulate flowering and um, fruit development. So these hormones have been used to develop um, fruits pretty much on, on flowers that haven't been uh, pollinated and are uh, hence fertilized. So otherwise these um, flowers wouldn't have developed fruit because they're not fertilized. However, with the uh, gibberellins, they then help with the development of this fruit. And so this can be applied um, as a spray. Next, we have abseasonic acid. Now this communicates to the plant to uh, stop or slow down growth. So it's a growth inhibitor. It also tells the plants to close its stomata and this can occur uh, during water stress. So this hormone can be found all across the plant. It can be found in the leaves and the stem uh, and the fruit. And finally, we have uh, ethylene. Now, ethylene is used in uh, fruit ripening, and it can also inhibit the effects of um, oxen, as well as uh, either inhibit or promote the growth or development of any part of the plant. And so this can mainly be found in the, uh, the tissue of ripening fruits, as well as nodes um, of the stem and leaves. And so a commercial use of ethylene is to ripen fruit after they've been picked, uh, and that is also just um, applied as a spray. Now, important impact of ethylene is that it prolongs the um, shelf life of um, any fruits, and so it allows, I guess, an extended period of um, availability of that fruit in supermarkets. So it's important to note that understanding um, these hormones can lead to a, a very significant effect in industry. A lot of these have um, an importance in, I guess, uh, fruit production. Either that's uh, setting fruits uh, and developing them, like the um, gibberellins, or with prolonging shelf life, like the um, ethylene and the cytokines. But there we have it, there are our plant hormones. These are the main five uh, to really know and understand if you're uh, dealing with them, and, and these are their main functions. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like this video, make sure to check out some of our other videos on plant production. We also have some on animal production uh, and regenerative agriculture. My name is Still Simmons uh, and this is Agriculture Explained.